This is an iPod Mini. These were made around January 2004 and the second generations came out around 2005. This is the second generation. I'm going to show today how to replace the hard drives in them. This is a 6 gig drive from a different iPod Mini that's failed. And this iPod Mini also has a failed hard drive in it. What's unique about these older iPods is they're very easy to upgrade to a compact flash card. There's no adapters needed. Some of the iPod classics, the older ones, you need a CF card to IDE adapter to make them work. And they don't always work so well with these. But with a regular flash card, CF card, they will plug directly into the iPod Mini with no other add-ons needed. And what's nice also about these is they're FileWire and USB, which is helpful if you have an older interface that only supports FileWire for charging. Nissan, for example, had an iPod kit uh, available in their 2006 uh, cars that's FileWire only. And this is nice because it will still work with your Nissan because of the FireWire interface, but it will also sync with USB. Getting these apart is a bit challenging. It's important to get one of these little tools. They come with the battery upgrade kits that you can get on eBay or Amazon. It helps to wedge this tool into this edge here and get the the bottom off and the, the the bottom off and the top. Now I've already popped these loose. I didn't want to spend all day just showing you how to get the uh, the bottom and top off. Using one of these tools and also a little bit that comes with this uh, husky set here is very handy uh, for getting the top and bottom off. These are glued on, so you have to break the glue loose and get that blue tool between the metal and the plastic. And then once you get it in there, although this is popped open, what I would recommend you doing once you get it in, the bull tool is in there, then you would use the bit, slide it in to help hold it in place, and then just slide it back and forth a few times. Eventually it'll work itself loose enough and then you can pry it loose. And there's some sort of a gooey double-sided tape or something in there that is going to provide a little bit of extra friction uh, in getting this off. Even though I popped it off, it's, you can see the glue already has grabbed it a bit. So the first step is just to get the bottom and top off. Also put the iPod in hold mode so it doesn't accidentally go on while you're working on it. So once you get the bottom and top off, they're exactly the same procedure. Just run that bull tool in there and work them off. Then you need this little screwdriver with a little Phillips bit and you have to work loose two screws which are on the top of the iPod. So we're going to work loose these two screws They're pretty small so don't don't go losing them Next we're going to go to the bottom of the iPod and there's a metal clip in here. I don't know if I can pick it up in the camera but you can possibly see that the clip sits in a metal groove here and there's four holes. I would assume if you had a C-clip tool you could possibly pull this out more easily. I don't have a C-clip tool that'll pull these out so we're just going to use a standard small screwdriver blade and work that out. I was not able to pop this out using the camera in front of me. I needed this closer to me but you basically work the screw driver in around the round edge here, pop it out, 
there's a little metal flint, uh, groove in there. You'll, you'll feel it when it pops out. Then go to the other side of the iPod and pop out the same top or bottom, either way. Once you pop out either the top or the bottom of that, the, it'll just fall out, and it's very easy. Okay. Next step, there's a little connector here that we have to unplug. This is what connects the click wheel to the circuit board. We need to disconnect that so we can slide the circuitry out of the casing. So very gently you want to work a screwdriver blade back there and very slowly you just want to pull that out. Do not rush this. This is a very sensitive connector. It's delicate and you can easily break it. So just work it out. Okay, once again I had to pop this out and I couldn't do it on the camera. I needed this closer to me without the camera in the way. But this is what this little connector looks like. It's the little foil edge connector here, the wiring. You want to be careful about it. You don't break that. So once that's popped open, now we can slide out the circuitry. So very carefully from the bottom very slowly, don't rush this, just push it out nice and gently. You'll see the screen starting to come out. Just take your time pulling it. If anything feels like it's stopping you from pulling it out, then don't, put, don't force it. Push it back in and make sure everything is flush, there's nothing getting in the way. Okay. If we flip this over, in this particular case, this uh, Mini has a Seagate. The other iPod Mini I had repaired had a Western Digital. These are CF cards. As you can see, this is really a hard drive. It's not flash memory. Here is a flash memory card from a, the SLR digital camera. They are the same size physically. They use the same pinouts. So this is a direct fit to be able to put a flash card in replace of the hard drive. And you can easily bump up the storage that you can have. You can get 64 gig or 128 gig cards. As of this video, these cards are going for about $35 to $40 on Amazon or Newegg. Next is to pull back the tape that's on this hard drive on the, both edges. So just pull that back all so that it's completely away from that edge connector. Then to using a screwdriver blade, we're going to go in here and we're going to pry this off. Be very careful. This is also a delicate part. It uses very fine pins. So take your time. Work it out easily. And there we go. I have a 32 gig card, so that's what's going to go on this one. The card goes face up onto the edge connector. Make sure you line up the pins so that both sets of pins are going into the card. And then you can use your screwdriver blade to support it in the back while you push it on. And that's it. Next step is to take the rubber boot off the hard drive and put it on the memory card. The memory card doesn't need the shock absorber feature of the rubber boot, but it's going to help the memory card from moving around in there because otherwise without the rubber boot it it tends to move up and down a small amount. So I would recommend installing the boot around it just so it doesn't move. Now we want to put it back together and reverse the steps. 
Also, this is a good time if you bought a uh, an iPod Mini uh, on eBay or from Craigslist. This particular one, I cleaned it up already, but somebody had a large strip of Velcro back here, and I used some goof off to get the Velcro off. So if you want to clean up the case, now is the time to clean it up before you put the uh, the guts back in this, so you can get this all clean. It's easy to clean when there's nothing in there. So very carefully slide the circuit board in from the top. There's an edge in the mini case. And again, while you're putting this in, if it gets too much resistance, pull it out and do it again. You don't want to break the, uh, the click wheel, any of the circuitry that's in there. Okay, now we have to reconnect this uh, connector. Actually, it's going to be quicker, easier to put the screws back in so that the circuit board doesn't slide around. I've put the screws back in from the top, those Phillip head screws. Now we can push that connector back on that connects the, uh, the click wheel. You'll feel a little snap when it goes in. Just make sure it's flush on both sides. Now we have to put this metal back plate back in. And you can see the grooves that this sits in. I recommend doing the top or the bottom first on one side and then push the other two sides in. Again, I'm not going to be able to do this while I have the camera in front of me, I don't think. I'll try. I think it's going to be easier if I can get it closer to me. And so it's in. Make sure all four sides are clicked into the groove and the metal casing. Now at this point, I would not put the bo bottom and top pieces on yet. I would now plug this into iTunes and verify that we can properly restore the code onto the CF card. You're going to have to restore the iPod. This is going to install the Apple software on the memory card. When you plug your iPod Mini into the PC, I'm using Windows 7, 64-bit, you're going to get this message in iTunes. This is completely normal. You're going to click OK, and iTunes is going to restore the Apple uh, code required to make this work correctly. So after you click OK, on that message about the data being corrupt, just click the restore button. You say yes, I want to restore it. And this will take a very little time. And that's it. You'll hear a disconnect in Windows, that's fine. It's rebooting the device. After about a minute, you will get a welcome message to your new iPod. At this point, just follow the prompts. You can sync your music back to it, and everything should function as normal. 
From the settings menu, you can also confirm if it sees the full capacity of the flash drive. This particular iPod, for some reason, the first time I restored it with iTunes, it only showed up as a 6 gig hard drive, which was what the second generation came with, was a 6 gig. Uh, I did a second restore with iTunes, and then the full 32 gig showed up, and you actually get 29.7 gig of usable space to store your content. This is a really neat upgrade because Apple has restricted the iPod iPod Nanos to 16 gig. And to get anything larger than that, you either have to go with the Classic, which is a hard drive based iPod, or you have to go with an iPod Touch, which is extremely expensive. The 64 gig is uh, 399. So for a 32 gig flash card being 35, 40 dollars, this particular iPod came off of eBay. It was shipped for 16 dollars. This is and it was pretty clean. As you can see, the case is not that bad. The screen is clean. So for 16 bucks plus the 35 or 40 depending on the how much you spend on a 32 gig card if it needs a new battery a battery is about 4 or 5 dollars. So for a relatively small amount of money you can have a very nice uh, player. Granted they're not as thin as the new ones but in this particular case this is going in my car. So I don't care it's underneath the seat of my car it's going to connect to the dedicated uh, interface that Nissan has in some of their older cars. And it's perfect. It's a lot cheaper. And in my case, my Nissan only charges the FireWire version of these. And this is FireWire and USB. So it works out just, just great. 